Afghan, and I wash him once a week. Um, at different t stages of their life, though, you may have to wash them more frequent. Um, this is a particular breed that we try not to brush dirty coat, so you want to only really be careful um, to, to brush this coat um, once it's clean. It is a hair and not, not a fur, so it, it's kind of more like washing your own hair once a week. Um, this is naturally, naturally short here and naturally short here. Um, we can do a little cleaning up with some plucking, but this is a no-trim breed, so there should be no scissors or any um, trimming on whatsoever on this breed. Although for show we do get, you know, we do have to do some, um, but it's a breed that you can't um, show any scissoring on. Um, he's three and a half years old, and then if you want to go to him, this is seven months old. They're born and they, they grow hair everywhere, including on their face. And as they get older, this hair will come out and drop out. And if it doesn't drop out, we can, we can start pulling it out so that they're able to, to see. And the saddle is not fully in yet, but this will also come with age. And it's usually starting, it starts back here usually, and you'll be able to see a little short hair come in. Um, and once they get older, it should be, it should be fully out. So he's got a way to go before that comes out. By 12 months old, you want this out. But they're very cute right now. <laughs> we call that monkey hair because they look like monkeys. So basically with him, um, every week when I, when I do him, I want to check his ears, make sure the ears are clean. I'll do that in the tub. Um, I also want to check their teeth, and I also brush the teeth in the tub. I'll show you that when I get to it. Um, we also want to make sure we do the nails. I can do briefly on him. Um, with dogs of this length hair, you can do it multiple ways. Um, some people are afraid of the grinder, but I use the grinder like you would use on like your Great Danes or, or whatnot. Um, you just have to be very careful to remove the hair so it doesn't get caught. Um, you can use the regular clippers if you're afraid of the grinder, but I actually like the grinder because it makes a nicer finish on the nails. So I'll just, um, his nails are pretty short already, but I'll, I'll show you a couple nails so that you can see. I usually kind of grab them here and I hold the, the hair back with your fingers. Some people use a ni some nylons. You can put nylons over their nails and poke the nails out um, if you're afraid of the hair. But I mean, basically you would just grind the nail like you would any other short hair dog. Just taking the, the tip and not, not the quick of the nail. Again, this you have to be careful with the long hair so you don't pull the, the hair. So that was that. I'll just do his other front one for, so be careful with the hair. And also some people, um, it, it might be easier if you have a dog of this length hair to, oops, I turned it off, to, um, do them when they're wet after you take them out of the tub because sometimes it's easier to see the feet that way. And then the last nail is always the hardest. And they don't like it. Come here. Simba, stay. Sorry. So that's the nails. And I like to keep them, you know, so you can't hear them when they walk on the the floor. I hate I hate hearing dogs ticking their nails on the on the pavement or or such. And if you road work on them, he he gets walked and road worked, so it kind of helps to keep the the nails back on the pavement. So um, I'm gonna stick him in the tub so that we can get his bath going. I tie him in just to be safe. Right, if I'm gonna be walking away, and it's very important with them to not let them whack their tail because they can break the tail when they shake and hit it up against things in the tub. So you gotta be very careful of their tails when you walk away. So I'm just gonna grab some shampoo and I'm gonna grab my electrical cord. This is sort of a non-traditional way to wash a dog. If you, don't, um, if you don't have a hydro bath, it's sort of a makeshift hydro bath. I'm gonna have to move my puppy though. I have a cord that's grounded so that we can't electrocute ourselves in the water. 
with him. Right now I'm using laser lights. It's a it's an Afghan hound breeder who who made it. They're called laser lights. It works very nice with their hair and makes them the hair drape very nice for the shows. So with the hydro bath, what this does is it pulls water from inside the tub and it comes out your hose and it more efficiently mixes your product instead of you mixing it in a bottle because most of the shampoos you need to dilute. And it, instead of doing that, it kind of just mixes it through the water and it helps to distribute it nicely through all their hair. Um, so what I do first is I just, I gotta warm it up. First. I kind of just give him a spray off a little bit so he's not dirty. <laughs> I don't want dirty in the water because that's where you're cleaning. Now with him, I just kind of do his his uh, his private areas because that's where he he's the dirtiest on an Afghan. I'll do their feet in case they step in anything. And I just kind of go around his, his groin area where the hair might be a little urine saturated. Just to make sure it's off before I use the shampoo. He's actually a really, really clean male, so I don't have to worry about it. But you never know. Here, stop, stop. And I usually put about a third of a cup of shampoo. Right into the water. Now you're mixing your shampoo right in your water. And once it gets to about an inch or so into the tub, and I can turn it on with my foot the way I have it set up. And now you're you're distributing the product all the way through the coat of the shampoo. And I use my hand to kind of work it in. Sorry, flashing you. But this is what a lot of Afghan people use. And you could do it on any breed, really, um, to help distribute the product here. And it's actually, I find it to be quicker and more efficient. And my dogs are on AstroTurf, so they don't get super dirty, so I don't have to worry about the, you know, really washing their coats too much because they don't really get that dirty. Careful not to try to get in their ears. Be careful cotton balls in their ears on some dogs that like some if you're afraid to get water in. Okay, so once it's all really worked through, you can have them turn around. Okay. On the other side. Watch out for the shake. <laughs> And I kind of push it back so he doesn't shake the tail. After that, you just rinse it with normal water. And you wash the product out. So it's just clean. And because it's diluted, it's not so hard to rinse out, you know, it's very easy. What can happen if there's some product that's left in it? Actually, the conditioner, I do leave in. Oh, yeah, okay. so some product, like the shampoo, you would never be leaving in. Yeah. Um, but there are some conditioner products that um, once you, you know, are made to be leave-ins. Um, I used to be of the um, sort of school of don't ever leave something in their coat. Um, but the, this particular product is actually was designed by Afghan people. And a lot of people have, have had luck with it. So I've actually tried to try it on him. And, and it makes this coat really nice. So... Oh boy. So the end. So I started working my own rules, but it's okay. <laughs> and how long have you been like grooming and showing Afghans for? Um, my dad got me an Afghan when I was in high school, the eight, late 80s. 
Yeah, he bought me a Afghan. And I didn't know what to do with it because I grew up with Great Danes. <laughs> so, and then um, he died when I was out of, right out of college and I didn't get an Af another Afghan for a long time because I was, I had too much to do, you know. Not enough time to have an Afghan with all the work. And I got another one when about in 1997. And then I just kind of started showing on my own, with my own dogs, and then all of a sudden I decided to show, you know, people would ask me to show their dogs as a favor, and then I kind of just started, and now I'm sort of probably for, not as a living, but as a night side business. So I do go to shows probably every weekend, when there are shows, not now. <laughs> But yeah, he eats, uh, quickly jumps to the top of the chart. He has to eat best and shows now. So, we're hoping for a good year next year when things get better. Okay, so his coat is pretty rich. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing. Fill it up, but use this conditioner. It's called Drape. And it kind of helps these drop coat dogs have, you know, have their coats laid down really, really nice. So I use this. It should be there. And then I also add a cap of the, the label kind of came off, but it's called silk. So I put one cap into the water of this stuff called silk. They're made to be used together. I'll dry him a little bit before I put him back on the table. I'm going to check his ears. Okay. So with them, I don't, you don't want to go in and ruffle the hair around when you dry it. I kind of just kind of dry down like this and squeeze so you don't cause any hair to tangle. You kind of just do this. And I will go in and just check his ears. He has nice clean ears. Just make sure I didn't get any water in there. This one's more of a problem ear usually, so he's got a little dirt in that one. So I'm going to go in with, uh, I have some swabs. I'm going to go in and clean 
I'll show you the swabs I use. I love these bamboo swabs. I get these, you can get them from Amazon, but the vets use them. I don't know if you've probably seen them at your vet. Um, but they're nice and soft, so you can stick them down in their ear canals. And I use my little ear cleaner. It doesn't matter what you use, non-irritating ear cleaner. And I'll just kind of soak it with it. And if they have a little bit of a dirty ear, I'll just, they don't like it, but I'll just kind of go in and clean without sticking it down too hard. But he has a little dirt in his ear, see? You kind of can pull some dirt out. And I'll go in and just kind of clean it. And just watch it if they have a little dirt in there. You want to make sure you don't get, he's got a little guck in there. So I'll probably just check that one. I have some stuff I can put in. Do a little more cleaner. You can also squirt the cleaner down the ear canal, but sometimes they really hate that. So I just kind of do it gently. And they tend to be fine with it. Yeah, that's much better. Much better. Her teeth. Every time they get a bath. I use pure baking soda. You can use the doggy toothbrush and a, a doggy toothpaste, but I, I like the baking soda because it makes them nice and white. The teeth stay nice and white for your show. So I kind of just wet my brush. This is dedicated baking soda for the downstairs here. So, and I just stick my brush in it. And I'm sure it doesn't taste very good, but we brush our teeth. important for the show dogs to have nice white teeth. Just make sure you go on the sides. Get way back there. It's good to get any, any breed used to having their teeth cleaned. You can start them as puppies. I start my, my, my poodle right now and my, my Afghan. So just make sure you... And their gums can bleed a little bit when you do it. And then after I use that, I use um, just kind of fresh breath whitening stuff. I think it probably tastes better than the baking soda. And I kind of go over it. I just put a little on it. This one is supposed to be used um, just straight into the mouth um, periodically, but I just like to use this afterwards for whitening. And I think they like it better. Probably minky. And then when they're, once they're on the table, I'm going to, I'll look and see if they have any tartar I need to remove with the scaler. Because sometimes, you know, on their teeth, they can get right up in there. But, I mean, he's not an old dog, but his teeth are nice. So, but it, it just takes a few minutes and it really makes the world a difference in their teeth. I never used to do it, but I started doing it last year and I noticed a huge difference. So that's their little teeth regimen. If you can do it more than once a week, you can. Um, but I tend to just do it when my dogs are in the tub. Because it's easier. I have them right here. Okay. I'll squeeze off the feet again. Okay. I'm going to grab a new towel. Okay, and then we're going to to the grooming table. This is a good time to kind of go through them. You can see all the way through their coat and where there's tangles. So a lot of times it's really good to brush them through right before you, you blow them dry. Okay. These are speedy stand dryers. You can use any stand dryer. I have all different brands. Um, Speedy's kind of a workhorse of dryers. 
but again, you can use any brand that you like. And I have separate circuits, so I'm not blowing fuses because these take up a lot of a lot of electricity. Just make sure that the comb goes through. There was no those, knots too. No knots and snags and in the usual areas. He, he should be pretty good. Yeah, but they, they can get toe mats, so you want to go through their toes. You want to make sure you're going in between. out gently. Something happened. He was running in the snow. Easier if you get out before you wash them? Well, sometimes it's not easier to get mm -hmm. it out before. It depends on how dirty they are, but like um this is probably a result of him getting wet outside and laying on laying and getting having it get dry. Um, it's, it's better because you want to always um, get the mats out so that when you so you can wash under the mats because if you keep washing mats in it could stay dirty in there and the shampoo is not getting in because it's all matted to the skin um, he's not going to get like that because it's 
not that severe. Um, but some people, sometimes there'll be mats right at the skin in some places on some dogs. And it's just, they have, they'll mat right back up. You'll get it out and then they'll mat right back up because the hair is so dirty. So it's best to make sure you wash underneath the mats when, when, if a dog is like severely matted. This dog is not going to, this is just a, an isolated mat from him getting wet. Hmm. And like other dogs, if they get like super, super, like really, really badly matted, is it like the only solution is to shave it? The, sometimes the or... most humane thing to do is shave them because mm -hmm. if, if you, it could take hours. I mean, look at how much time it's taking me just to get this little snag out. If, if, if a dog is so severely matted to the skin and you can't, to pull it out, you're pulling their hair and it's so hurt, it hurts the dogs. So probably, you know, if you get a dog in like this that, you know, somebody neglected or let get matted to the skin, it's best to shave them. I mean, with a breed like this, it would take two, you know, oh, sorry, honey, two years to grow back in. Um, but like on a poodle, it would be quick. So, but like, you see, see how you keep crying just with the little tiny mat? Mm -hmm. um, it, it just is more humane sometimes to shave them. So, yeah. but I, every dog can get a mat. Even dogs that are well taken care of, so. And it depends on the coat stage, like at like at around a year to 18 months, of even up to two years, the, the Afghans, you may have to wash them every four days because they mat up right away. She's she's matting, um, the, or she, or the poodle. Right now I'm having a terrible time um, with her, her neck hair matting because she's changing her coat over right now from that, you know, the soft puppy stuff to the, to the crisp, the nice crisp poodle, poodle hair. So we're having a hard time right now with her. It's a completely different hair though. <laughs> so I think he's probably good. And it's always good to go with go through with a comb afterwards and make sure there's no snags. Now for him, I'm gonna go ahead and do some banding, keep him clean. Um, just for Simba, because he did go home and chew off part of his ear, see? Mm -hmm. um, I band him. So when you band, you just wanna make sure that you don't catch the, the ear leather in your band, so you wanna feel the leather of the ear and where it stops, and you wanna always make sure the band is below that. Or you can, you can injure, injure the ear. Gonna, by banding them, it's not going to prevent them from getting dirty, but it can prevent them from getting them in their mouth or in their food. But you have to be very careful because they can get the bands caught on just about anything. Like you, they can get them caught on like a pen. Um, I've had them get caught on drawers with knobs. Um, you have to be very careful when you band. Because um, sometimes it, it can be just as well as bad as leaving the ears down. But for, for these dogs, it's just sometimes easier just to keep it out of their mouth. So with him, I just do these like that. And during the week, you, I, if, if they get messed up, I'll take them down and do them again. Make sure. It depends on their hair also. Um, some, some coats will will mat if you put a band in it, and some kind of coats will never mat when you put a band in it. Um, but the more dirty that the coat gets, the more that it can mat around a band. So, but the, the biggest problem is just make sure you're not banding their ear into it. And you can stick the thumb through like this, and you'll know you, you're good. If you hit the a leather where the comb doesn't go through that bad. But this kind of just keeps the hair out of their mouth. It's not going to prevent them from dragging on the ground. The band, the wraps that I do on hand. PJ, PJ, come here. PJ, come, come, come here. Come, come, come. Let's go. Let's go. See with him. I wrap his ears up into a vet wrap. So I'll take the vet wrap and wrap it all the way around the ear, and then I fold it back up and band it. So his ears are like down to here. But hmm. this keeps it cleaner because it's not, you know, when he puts his head down to sniff, his ears aren't hanging on the ground, whereas his are. But if I did that, this to him, I'm not sure that, you know, because he's playing with the other dogs, they can easily grab a wrap and rip out the ear. So you have to be very careful. 
This dog is good with the bat bands. And then for the side, I just do minor ones on him because he's kind of clean for a boy. I'll do the side here. Take it down from the hip bone so that they can still move. And I make a section. And you band forward. Like that, make a ponytail. And then you take another section, depending on how many, I'm just gonna do a couple on him. You just take another section and you band them completely together. Like that. Okay, and then it keeps it away from, I can even do one more, but it keeps it away from their urine stream when they lift their leg. And then you, you don't have dirty hair on the dog when they're in your bed and Okay. Keeps them clean. And then down the leg, we do the same thing. Take it, kind of just make a ponytail. And put a band. I'm blowing it through a mask, that doesn't work. Okay, and then you sort of kind of, instead of going that way, you go down. So you take another section and you sort of band it to that first section that you do. Like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna do two on him because he stays clean. And that keeps him clean. I also do one back here. Because when he squats to go to the bathroom, he can easily get it on the fringe of his hair back here and make a mess. So I'll do the butt as well. One on each side. For the show, for once once we do them for show, um, once they're clean, then <laughs> then every time they get walked, they get boots. So he'll his feet will never touch the ground until until you get home from the show. So you just take the boot, and they're made for they're the same all four legs, and you stuff all their hair in it. And you just take the Velcro and wrap it around so that anywhere they walk, albeit, you know, wet showgrounds or hotels or anywhere that, you know, their feet are going to get dirty, then the boots only get dirty. And if it's pouring out and pouring rain, then their feet stay dry. So this is what we use at shows. See if I can put one on while he's up here. Then he stays clean. <laughs> and the snood. <laughs> Stay clean. <laughs>